Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. I showed you how a repeater works, what it sounds like, how to use it, and so on. We're going to be just a little bit more theoretical today. Uh, the purpose of a repeater is to take your signal, amplify it, and transmit over a broader geographic area. And then someone who hears you can do the reverse. Their weaker signal can be retransmitted uh, over a very large area. Now, the question, first of all, is how to find a repeater. The way to find repeaters has changed rather dramatically over the last several years. Uh, the League has partnered with RFinder, the Worldwide Repeater Directory. You see their webpage here at rfinder.net. Uh, there is a $13 annual subscription fee. Uh, in order to get this. And if you travel around a lot, that's uh, probably a good idea. Uh, it has data from, they say, 175 countries in their directory. That's a lot of traveling. Uh, another way to find repeaters is to simply go to the internet and Google. Uh, for example, if you were to Google uh, repeaters in Western Colorado, uh, you would find uh, quite a number of repeaters that way. Uh, one of the problems, of course, with the internet and with any listing is that uh, sometimes repeaters are on there that don't actually exist. Uh, sometimes repeaters that do exist are not on there. Uh, but they do try. I think this new method with RFinder uh, gives more accurate information overall. Now, the next thing we need to know is offset. The offset is the difference between the frequency that you transmit and the frequency that you receive. Your 2 meter rig or 440 rig will show on it the frequency at which it will receive. And the repeaters are listed in the directories according to the frequency that you will receive. You transmit on a different frequency. Now, let's just take a little bit here to go through a few charts that talk about how the offset frequency works. Let's take a look at these charts. A repeater might be up on a mountaintop and you're trying to talk to somebody on the other side of the mountain. Now the repeater will identify on the output frequency which both of you can hear so that you can hear the uh, uh, see what's going on. You will transmit on the input frequency and he will listen on the output frequency. There's a place in there for a break to give others a chance to break in and then he will transmit on the input frequency and you receive on the output frequency. And that's all there is to it. Access tones. The problem that we have with large geographic areas, especially in the cities, is that a repeater may have a geographic coverage that happens to overlap with another repeater uh, on the same frequencies, maybe 50, 100 miles away. And so what the repeater asks you to do is to transmit not only along with your voice, but also a tone and the tone is very low in frequency, so low that we call it a sub-audible tone. And all uh, FM equipment these days allows you to insert a specific tone for each repeater that you have in memory. Um, that way the thing just automatically transmits the tone. You have to know what the tone is. If you get it wrong, the repeater will think, oh, there's something coming in, but it must be interference because I'm not hearing this tone. So you've got to get the tone right. You get the tone from the same place that you get the information about repeaters. They will be listed uh, with the uh, frequency, whether your transmit offset is above it or below it, and what the tone is. Now, most radios these days will take care of the offset automatically for you. You don't need to worry about it, but you do need to input the tone. Now, let me talk for a moment about private repeaters. There's nothing to stop a few people getting together, finding a mountaintop, putting a repeater system together, and then putting uh, a tone on it that they don't tell anybody about. 
and that is a closed repeater. Its use is only limited to the people who are part of that little group. Now, something to remember about this, that is perfectly legal. Even though nobody owns a particular frequency, when it comes to repeaters, if they have been coordinated through the appropriate people, that rule kind of doesn't apply. In fact, people can kind of sit on a frequency. You can't, for example, just have a simplex conversation on the input frequency to a repeater and say, well, it's not your fault that it was picked up and broadcast everywhere. In fact, it is. Uh, almost all repeaters go through a rather lengthy coordination process. And if you do that kind of a shenanigan, the FCC uh, will issue you a citation. So please respect the repeater frequencies. There are ample parts of our VHF bands where you can do simplex, where you can do other types of things, AM, signal side band, CW, moon bounce, satellite, whatever may strike your fancy. Uh, just please keep them off the repeater frequencies. Now there are other kinds of repeaters that act very similarly to these, but they're digital. Uh, the book mentions a few associated uh, IRLP uh, associated with the internet. We haven't really even talked very much about packet radio because that has its own set of repeaters and so on. But there are ways to talk digitally and it uh, gives you some advantages out here where I am on the Colorado Western Slope. We don't see much of that, but it is possible still to do that. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea. Jump into the repeater section. There are a number of questions on there. Repeaters are a major fact of life for the technician class uh, amateur radio operators, and you will soon find your favorite repeaters. And what you'll find is that you tend to talk to the same people on those repeaters and you can meet them at your club meetings. You can uh, talk with them, develop friendships. Uh, this is a great way to meet other hams. Uh, one of my closest friends, Randy Cassingham, who lives down here near me and in fact was the one who helped demo in the last tape, uh, I met him on a repeater on the Boulder Amateur Radio Club repeater in Boulder, Colorado. I was just listening one day. I put out a call and uh, he came back, we started to chat, and it's led to a very long-term, lifelong friendship. That is available to you. Take advantage of it. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On The Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.